Kedusha of, ha- of holiness is the absence of life. And that we call under the wide criteria impurity, Tum'ah. No, not with a Geiger counter and not with a microscope can you identify or sense impurity. It's something related to the metaphysical. And therefore, there's Tum'ah that comes out of the body. There's sometimes Tum'ah that appears on the body. And, but the laws of Tuma and Tahara are so metaphysical, so belonging to statutes that have no rational understandings. What's that part of the Torah that there's no rational understanding to? Hirsch, do you remember the name of that department of the Torah? What is it called? I'm not going to learn enough yet to give you the right answer. Okay, he's very humble. What is it called? No. Chok. And plural for the word Chok? Chukim, that's right. Chukim. Chok, Chukim. Bamidbar, chapter 19. Zot Chukata Torah. This is the statute of the Torah. Which great mitzvah does it introduce? Paraduma, the red heifer. That after the burning of the red heifer, we take the afer, the ashes, and with Maim Chayim, sprinkling it on someone who is Tamei to the to the mate, to the dead. And he'll be sprinkled upon day number three and day number seven, that's right. And then he becomes pure. These are laws that we don't, it looks like hocus pocus. It looks like magic. We don't understand what it is, but it's godly, godly ordained. So therefore, section number one talked about problems in the camp, namely three different levels of tuma. The first one was a person who has, it may come to him, a be careful what you say about this person. Even if it's true, it's called the prohibition of? Lashonara. I didn't ask you, what is it called? Lashonara. Lashonara, right? Lashonara. And one of the effects of Lashonara could be this leprosy. No, you don't go to a skin doctor to, to prescribe a cream or something of that. Tzarat, like we learned in the book of Vayikra, the book of Leviticus, has to be identified by a? A Kohen. A Kohen that is studied, that has done his internship, that knows the laws of the Rambam. How do I identify what is leprosy? And if he does have leprosy and we're inside the camp, he's taken out of how many of the three camps? Each of the three. He has to be Badad Yoshev. He's going to sit idle outside the camp. Think about what you're doing. That is the first Tuma. The second Tuma we saw yesterday is Azav. Okay? Okay? That's something that comes upon a person with some sort of illness that he cannot preserve his health. <coughs> it's something that maybe he didn't voluntarily think about or do this or that, but this flow of this liquid that comes out of the same area where a person will urinate is identified as a Zav. It's different than Zera. Today we hardly have it, or we, maybe we don't have it whatsoever. So he will be taken out of which camps if, he is, if, he's, if he's diagnosed as a Zav? Machane Shechina plus Machane Levia. He's permitted to be in which of the, which of the three camps? Machane Israel. Then we saw Tuma number three. Tamei Lamet. Tamei Lamet. Defiled to the dead. Okay? Which is severe, but it's not a sin. It's not a sin. Who is personally or tribally warned not to become defiled to the dead? Kohanim. The Kohanim. Okay? Emor, Parshat Emor, Vayikra, 21. We learned it several weeks ago. Lenefesh lo yitama. A Kohen may not be allowed to defile himself. So if he or someone else is defiled, which the Tamei mate may not enter into which camp? Machaneshchina. So it's less severe. He's allowed to be in which two camps? Machanelavia, Machaneso. Very good. The last section we studied yesterday in verses 5 to 10 is the person that's obligated in the violation, not stealing. What is it called? Geza. One more time, pronounce it better. Geza. And not? Not that animal called a gazelle. That's correct. Gazelle and not a gazelle. And we said or identified gazelle as? Uh, force. 
by force, armed robbery, armed robbery, by force, taking some things, and therefore it's not under the same penalty as geneva, stealing, which is what the penalty is? To pay double. To pay double, right? Here, we're talking about a particular case, that the geza, which has been adam lachavei between one fellow Jew and another, but here the Torah called it ma'al ba'ashem, embezzling against God. How does the Gemara and Rashi, uh, as a result, identifies where is the embezzlement against God? What is this particular case talking about that you remember we studied yesterday? David? Um, Not the next David. What is this particular case talking about? You remember? No. no. Yossi, you remember? No. You're shy. Oh, you weren't here yesterday. Did you, did you bring a note from your mom or something? They weren't here? Next time. Next day, won't have to. No, who remembers? What is the case talking about? Swearing in the name of oh, very good. Talking about a violation of swearing and using God's name. He goes to the Beitin, and in front of the Dayanim, the judges, he takes an oath in God's name and says, I did not. I didn't take this object. And then he's, of course, absolved. We believe that he doesn't have the audacity, the goal, to violate such a prohibition. And then... Who knows? Years later, he calls up. Ding a ling a ling a ling. Meir. Yeah, I want to become a Baal Tshuva. Can I come study in your department in Machon Meir? I'd like to do my repentance. And we sit down without a couch. He starts talking about some of the misdemeanors and some of the major crimes that he's done. And uh, Rabbi Gon always enjoys telling stories of uh, interesting people that have studied here. He said, very interesting people. The best of... The best of uh, uh, people, one uh, girl came over to him many years ago and said, look, I used to work as, a, what, what's that job that people come into the hotel rooms and they change the bedding and everything else, what are they called? Housekeepers. Housekeepers, they're called? So she says, look, I, I, she comes to the Rav and says, I was working in this housekeeping place every day and I would come in with an empty bag and every day I'd leave with a different towel and I did it for years and I sold the towels, made money, this and that. And I like to do tshuva. I like to do repentance. What can I do? So why don't you call up the hotel? So the hotel was torn down already five years ago. <laughs> what do I do? How do I repent? How do I do it? So the rab says to her, look, make an evaluation, an estimation, financial estimation. How much did you take? And take that monies, take those monies and donate it to a charity institution. Yeshiva, orphanage, whatever you like to do, the, the cancer institution, whatever. And that, that'll be like a paying back of, uh, of what you've benefited from, illegally, of course. Uh, so that's just an example. But of course, tshuva has great power. Okay? Even though this eraser can erase the ink or the marker, tshuva has so much power, like we learned, the Talmud says, Mesechet Yoma, Rav Kook talks a lot about it after 900 years ago in Spain, Sharei Tshuva, the uh, Rabbeinu Yona discussed a lot, but the power of Tshuva has the power not only to erase the, the debits, but we can also even get credits. If we do Tshuva out of love, our balance sheet can have a positive side because there are two types of Tshuva. There's Tshuva out of repentance, out of fear. And there's repentance out of love. In any event, that's a subject we'll talk much more about, God willing, in the month of Elul uh, as we proceed. Uh, I just want to recap what we saw here. So we're talking here about Ma'al, Mi'ila, and Bezim. We're going to get to your question. Want me to stop and hear your question first? Is there anything that's like too bad to not do Teshuvah for? So there's a lot of bad things, Chayvei Karet, that are very difficult. The, that too can be Tshuva. Uh, done for it, repentance, but the violation of Chilul Hashem, of not sanctifying God's name and desecrating as the Rambam brings it from the Gemarot and Sanhedrin, those are the things that uh, we have to pay for. So rapists cannot do Teshuvah? I didn't say that. I said Chilul Hashem. Rape. When when, oh, and to, your, and the, your questions are not here related. I'll be happy to sit with you and talk to you and show you what type of Teshuvah can be done. Will it be effective totally for the woman that uh, the terrible pain? But that's not the subject, so you're going to have to respect my uh, decision now. Yes? Yeah, what about the concept that 
somebody who did something bad but overcame it is actually higher. No doubt, no doubt, no like doubt. The Talmud says, and I'm quoting, the, the spiritual height of people that do tshuva is much higher than righteous people that never sinned and so on and so forth. We're leaving that subject, we're coming back to here. So, the mal, the mila against God was taking the oath against God and lying. He does tshuva, he comes back. What are these... Halachic instructions, number one. What does he do with the principle? What does he do with the principle? Mishalem berosho. It says in Pasuk Zayin, Veishivit ashamo berosho. Ashamo, there is the principle that he took. So he must return it to the person. Then a fine, which is a chamishit, a fifth. And then what about cleansing his soul to God? El akipurim. David, look at me, Mr. Adler. El Hakipurim. Spell it. El for every. Why? And it's not spelled. No, no. Or and not spelled. Aleph Lamed. Because we're not talking about God. El is conjunctive for the animal called. Ayo. One more time. Ayo. Ayo with an Aleph. Now, without talking about the football team in Los Angeles, we're going to mention that an Ayo. Is used for which holiday? Rosh Hashanah. The shofar ayol is used for Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Anyway, Ela Kippurim. This is his ayol of atonement. He's going to use. Oh, by the way, zoologically, what is an ayol? Don't tell me a ram. Please don't say ram. Tell me, explain to me, what is an isle? A mill. A horned goat. A mountain goat. A male goat. That's a yael. Yael. An isle? What? That's right. It is a lamb. That's now in its second year. A keves. That's in his second year. Once he reaches his... He begins the second year without a birthday cake, enough to bring him a cake. Then he is what we determine as an aisle. Certain sacrifices are only legal or legible by using the aisle. Uh, for instance, the Korban Pesach, no, we can use a baby one within one year, a Gedi, the Paschal Lamb. But there are Korban like this one that has to be a ram. A ram is halachically a lamb in his second year. Okay, what was the novelty we learned? This subject was already taught to us in the book of Ayikra, chapter 6. So what is it doing here again? So we're talking here about the robbery was done to, for instance, a member, a new member of the Jewish people, a Ger Tzedek. And if he died, then he, he has no Yershim, he has no uh, be benefactors, inheritors to uh, receive the principal plus the fifth. So who will be the benefactor of the payment and the fifth? Does the Torah say? Koanim. Koanim, it's as equal as if you're paying back God. Why? The manifestation of the kuna, our squadron, the divine squadron, the divine people working down below. I know it's the Jewish people. But who is the special elite unit inside the Jewish people? Koanim. When you become older, do you want to become a coin? I can't. Ah, oh, you can't. Why? Because your father's not. I understand. Okay, we'll talk about it another time. Now let's go on uh, to the next subject, which I don't think I'm going to teach. Next subject, which is also a problem on the road, is the subject called what? Isha Sota. Here we're talking about, it's a very long subject. Starts in verse 11 of chapter 5. And the subject goes on and on until verse 31. But the oral Torah, some of you may know, we have an entire Mesechet, an entire tractate of Mishnayot and Gemara called Mesechet. Sota. In the order called. There you go. You know you had the right answer. Okay. Sota. How is it spelled in the Torah? 
find it in the beginning of this unit from verses 11 and on. A woman who is a sota, it says, and I'm reading verse 12, Tabero b'nei Yisrael v'yamarta le'em ish ish ki tiste ishto. There's the verb, tiste ishto. What? I said, open up a window. Ki tiste ishto. How is the word sota spelled here? And how would you spell sota here? That's the verb. Come to the board, Hirsch. Okay. That, that's enough. Okay, beside that, we have the argument. Sota. So it's enough, Devin. Have a seat and learn. Let's go over here. Sota. How, he said it's spelled with a sin. Okay, right to the far left. Sin. Sota. Now from the verb tiste ishto, his wife shall do this. Now you're going to write the name of the woman, Sota. Let's see how you spelled it according to David Adler. Let's see if it's right. Sota. I want, would you just, uh, that tet, put it, put it landed on the bottom. I don't want it to be a luft mentioned in the middle of the air. Land it, put the bottom of the tet down below. It's spelled this way. If you, Renan looks now to his left or in back of himself, Thank you, sir. And hang out. You're going to spell it in another way in one second. He looks at the name of the tractate here. You're going to find out that sota is spelled with, not a sin, Samech. with a samech. So therefore, take the color red and spell sota now with a samech. Interesting. I'm not going to deal with this a long matter. I just want you to be aware the verb listot. Al tiste meaderach. Don't deviate from the way in life. There could be currents. Thank you, sir. You can sit down. Yes. You send me a bill afterwards. We'll take care of you later. Um, listot could mean spiritually. And it could mean if you're driving on the road. Lo listot. Don't deviate. Don't go off of the road. Spiritually, don't leave the derech. Some people have to go visit uh, their families in Chutzlaret. Chutzlaret is not an easy place to live, to be faithful to God, to, the, to, to Israel, to the Jewish people, to Torah mitzvot. Altis temenaderach, don't deviate from the road. The Torah writes listot with a sin. That's the first way you wrote it. You said David Adler, and that's what Hirsch pronounced it. However, in the Mishnayot, Renan, have you found it yet? The tractate called Sota, it'll be spelled with a samich. What can we conclude? The following. Lashon Torah lechud, Lashon Chachamim lechud. The language of the Torah can be of such, and the language of Chachamim, our sages, can be other. We used an example, Eitz and Ilan. Again, the Torah uses Eitz. The Mishnah uses Ilan. The same, again, the, by the way, the, the Hebrew language, of course, is a very rich language. In any event, we talked about a, a, a thief by force was the former subject. And now the Torah at length talks about a mess up inside the family cell. Inside the family cell. Where a woman is caught going into a closed room with the man. There's no testimony, as it says in verse 13, that they had relations. But they were there alone, and there were there could be a dim that she was in there. The Torah talks a lot at length about this subject, and certainly we, as students of Torah, realize, unlike the promiscuous life of Western society today, where things are so open and it's even having an effect on Israeli society to, to an unfortunate extent, we have to realize our life is holy. We're not a religion. It's not, you know, just serving God inside your synagogue and that's it. Holiness permeates all, all dimensions of our Jewish life, private and public, national and economic, marital and individual. Our life is permeated to the extent we were learning last week, uh, what is the word for engagement in the Mishnah? Kiddushin, Kiddushin very good. Right? And we have a tractate. Because to be married 
is holiness. Because she now becomes holy until you. She can't be with anyone else. She's an Eshetish. So we have this uh, interesting subject of Sota, which is a lot talked about, of course, inside uh, the Mishnayot and the Chumash. Uh, I really don't want to deal with it because I want to get to some other matters. But uh, this woman, if she doesn't admit, and there's no other choice, as we see, she's br and we don't have two witnesses. If we have two witnesses, God forbid, of a married woman having relations with another man, what is the penalty of the Torah? Yeah. We kill you. Meet that capital punishment. Only if we have, what's the name of that court? Uh, Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin. When we have capital punishment. But if there is no two witnesses, and I don't care if it's likely to happen, circumstantial evidence is not accepted, the Torah has a birur. It makes a clarification. We bring this woman from verses 15 and on. We bring her before God. Would you please tell me the address? What does it mean? We bring her before God. We bring her to the Omeh, to the Mishkan. Okay? And what type of korban does she bring? Made out of what? Grain in verse 15? Kemach seorim. We all know the difference between chita wheat and seorim barley. Barley by large is a product consumed by? By animals. So why is she asked to try to clean herself to bring a korban, an offering made out of seorim? Because she obviously did what type of action? No, I'm sorry. She suspected of doing what type of action? Animalistic. An animalistic action. Animalistic. Not preserving her holiness. So, uh, her husband will bring the korban for his wife. Okay? Because he's the one that's warning her. He's the one that has this spirit of jealousy, this ruach kena, that he's warning her. And he, the korban is a vegetative korban. As you see in verse 15, Kemach Seorim, it's a mincha offering. It's called the minchat, excuse me, kinaot. Kine, kina, jealousy. He's jealous of, her, of, of, her, of his warning her, meaning he, he warned her, don't do this. And then she's caught going alone into a room. We don't know exactly what she did. And now he's bringing a korban. Is the korban enriched with shemen? No. no. Why not? Because, because it's representing a, an, animalistic an animalistic action. And even the levona, remember that frankincense, the levona would be brought with every korban. And if she doesn't listen, if nothing happens, and she still does not admit, then we come to verses 19 to 25. Okay. And uh, we're going to do what? We're going to cause her to swear. To swear in God's name. Did she or did she not do it? And we're moving her from one area to the other area. Right now she's obstinate. And we would prefer to have her admit if she really did it. Uh, all these laws are very, very lengthy that we don't have much time to get into. Mr. Bradley, what do you want to say? It says... Uh, Invest uh, which pasuk, of course, you're identifying... Uh, you what, sir? Um, 15. That's right. So is that, is that unusual that he's bringing for her? Is that unusual to the circumstance, or is that the normal manner of bringing something? Uh, the Ramban, Nachmanides, addresses your question and explains she being suspected after warned. We don't know if she did it, but she's suspected. She's not in the spiritual level to bring her korban, and therefore her husband brings it on her behalf in verse 15. That's what Nachmanadi says. In the event that all of these things do not work, we have a potion of water. The Talmud explains, we take God's name, it's dissolved in the water, and that will test if she did or not have relations as a married woman with someone else. If she did have relations, what do these waters do in verse 27? No, if she did have relations. Vitzavta oh, vitna, uh, her stomach will swell, will swell and swell. Vinafla yorecha, meaning her womb will be messed up. She will no longer be able 
to conceive. That's what it means, the commentaries explain, which is like a midah keneged. Explain that, read that, say that term again. Midah keneged midah. A measure for a measure. A measure for a measure. Midah keneged midah. You said it. It's an expression of Chazal, verse sages. Here, referring to the punishment, what happens during verse 27. But if she didn't have relations in verse 28, if the Torah says in verse 28, follow. Vimlo nitma isha. Again, we're in chapter 5, verse 28. Now you're in chapter 6. Okay. If she didn't have relations, then drinking this potion, what will happen to her? It says in the end of 28, Vinikita Vinizra'a Zara. Vinikta. Look at that verb. Look at that word. What do you associate with the word? What is the root of the word? From the word? Nikta. From which word? What Linakot? She'll be clean. Very good. Meaning she will be absolved. She will be innocent from what? From punishment that her taking of her oath caused. Okay? Vinikta. And what will happen in the future? Vinizra Azara. One second. So what is Nizra Azara? What will happen to her? She'll be able to conceive. She'll be able to have a child in the future. As some of you know, there's a new song. It, not, it replaces the old song. We don't say it takes two to tangle. It takes three. Three partners in the creation of a human being. Abba, Ima, and the boss. And the boss upstairs, Eliav. Is there any parallelism between this and the Chetael in Arzina when they had to drink? Uh, the okay, there's a, that's it's a similar situation. That's right. That's all in the oral Torah which you're mentioning. Here, though, it's written in the in the Chumash itself, the drinking of a potion. Yes, so there is a parallel that there's some sort of divine intervention here to find out what happened. To find out what happened. Okay, so that's regarding uh, the stia, the deviating of this type of woman. And this is another case of mi'ila, embezzlement against God, against her husband, and so on and so forth. Shall we go now to the next subject, gentlemen, which is? Uh, nazir. Nazir, very good. Are you closing your eyes? You know this by heart? <laughs> <laughs> Try not to show off the you know, but just have your eyes open. Okay, I'm reading section Perak Vav. A very interesting section. We'll spend a greater deal of time with this. Does everyone have the? Is there anyone here who doesn't have the place? Perik Vav, chapter six, the beginning of the chapter. Is there someone here that doesn't have the place? Vayidabera Dunai El Moshe Limor. Dabero Bene Yisrael via Marta Alehem. Ish o Isha, a man or a woman, ki afli lindor neder nazir lazir la Dunai. Verse 3, I'm continuing. Miyayin v'sheichar yazir. Chomet yayin. V'chomet sheichar lo yishteh. V'chom mishrat anavim lo yishteh. V'anavim lachim viveshim. Last two words of the Pesach, gentlemen. Lo. Yo. Yo. Yochel. I'm just saying if you're, you're awake, that's all. Pesach Dalet. Call your main Israel, Mikol Asher Ye Ase, Mikefenayayin, Mechar Tsanim, Viadzag, Lo, Yochel. Prohibition number one of three prohibitions to a Nazir or a woman called a Nazira. Pasuk 5, Kol Yemei Neder Nizro, Prohibition number 2, Ta'ar, Lo Yavor Rosho, Asher, no more hair cuttings. Ad Milota Yamim, Asher Yazir La Dunai, Kadosh Yeh, Gadel Pera, Se'ar Rosho, 
Prohibition number three, verse six. Call yemei azirol Adunai al nefesh mate. Lo, yavo. Le'aviv ulimot to his parents. Lachivu lachato his siblings. Lo yitamelem bimotam. God forbid if any one of them passes away. He can't go in where? Cemetery. The cemetery. Under the roof of the dead. Why? The end of verse 7. A very key pasuk. Ki nezer elohav al rosho. I'm stopping here. Look at me. He has a what on his head? A nezer. And he's called a? Nazir. He's called a nazir. And he, is it a gold crown or is it synthetic or is it plastic? What? It's, a spiritual. Yeah, it's a spiritual crown. In other words, but also like his hair is a little. So is it? Is, uh, would you say the Torah support? Are you saying that the Torah is supporting the hippie movement? In this case, yes. Are we going back to the uh, Vietnamese War in the 1950s oh, and like 60s, <laughs> and we're talking about Greenwich Village in New York and the hippies and all those matters? What? What did, you, what did Jesse say? Uh, Woodstock. Uh, you said, I thought you, uh, they knew that's in Brazil. Okay. I uh, know. <laughs> I thought you're very young. Okay. My dear friends, we're going to now learn about an interesting subject. The Nazir, what is he called? What is he called here? What shall he be? Kadosh. Kadosh. He wants to be Kadosh. He wants to be holy. What does he say? It's not enough for me, the Tariag Mitzvot. I want more. That could be one type of Nazir. Another Nazir says, every time I walk past certain shops, I go in with a full bag of money and I come out moneyless. It's hard for me to control myself. I want to add more Kedusha to my life. Does the Torah allow it? Yes or no? Yes. yes. He has to take what we call a neder. What did I just say? Oh, neder. 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 Did I just say oath? No, neder. No. What is the word for oath? It's Mr. Hirsch, come to the board again, please. And this time, use the letter Shachor to write two words, Neder, and also, what did you say now in Hebrew? Shivua. 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 Is, that what, is that what you wish the bus driver every Sunday morning? Uh, I thought you said Shavua Tov. <laughs> what are you laughing about, Renan? It's also Segol. Okay, and and now I want you to write the word shivua. Shivua. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, we want to know first and foremost, and be aware that to the left of Ranan we have all the Mishnayot and the Gemarot. We have a separate Masechet called Masechet Shivuot. Which one? Kamatz. And we have a Masechet, what do you say, Rana? Nidarim. And we have another Masechet called what? Masechet Nazir. And a third Masechet tractate called Masechet? I'm going to ask uh, Ranan come to the board and add a letter that Hirsch purposely left out. I didn't ask you. Uh, you're in the middle? No. No? No. So, I don't know. Okay, that's an answer. That's an honest answer. Usher, what letter should be added? Huh? No. Shavuot? No, I'm talking singular. Shav oh, oh. Hey. So put a hey there at the F of the I. Thank you. I'm happy. Hirsch and I talked about this before and purpose left it out to see if we catch the attention. 
תודה רבה. How much do we owe you? You put on the bill. Okay, just say that. Now, we have three Mesechtot tractates in the oral Torah. We have a Mesechet Shivuot, we have a Mesechet Nidarim, and we have a Mesechet called Nazir. Nazir. Okay? Nazir. Eliav, you're going to put up the word Nazir. Is a Ned, is the Nazir a type of Neder or a type of Shvua? Prove it to me from the word. Nazir. Nazir. Is it a type of Neder or is it a Shavua? It's How do you prove it to me? Prove it to me! It says. What does it say? Thank you. It says, Kiafli, Lindor, Neder, Nazir. What letter should we add? Which one? Which letter? Wow, this is great. My Asiatic students are coming and showing their power of Hebrew. There you go. Sina is in Asia, so... There you go. Thank you. Okay. So, here the Torah says, Nazir is a type of Neder. We want to explain what is the difference between a neder and a shavua. When a person takes an oath, a shavua, by the way, is it permitted to take a shavua? No. Wrong. It's permitted. But your local rabbi and scholar will tell you, don't do it. Don't play with fire. Because you may not be able to fulfill your shavua. And it's, a, it's, it's one of the big ten. Okay, the difference between a shavua and a neder, the shavua is a reflection on the person. We call it in Aramaic, in the Gemara, on the gavra. The prohibition, if you said, you know, I, every time I go buy this ice cream parlor, you know, I go in and I buy this big barge, it's 2,000 calories, you know what my stomach looks like after a week? I have to take a shavua, I have to forbid myself to eat ice cream. He takes an oath in God's name. The prohibition is on the person, on the gavra. That's the nature of a? In contrast, a neder is not a prohibition on the person, but as we say in the language of the Gemara in Aramaic, on the, thing. On the object, on the cheftza. Cheftza in Hebrew, modern day Hebrew, chefetz. What is a chefetz? Chafetzim? You're told in the train, in the bus, in all three languages. Check in. To, objects. objects. Check your chafatzim. Okay. Don't make sure you don't you don't leave or forget a chafetz, right? Otherwise, they're going to bring the bomb squad. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, again, in summary, if someone uses the formula of a language, it's written mesechen idurim, brought to the Rambam and the Shulchan Aruch, and he says a prohibition in the formation of a language of a neder. The prohibition's not on the person. The prohibition's on the object. You're not allowed to use that object. You'd made a neder. Ice cream, you know that? It's on the object. Whereas if you took a shvua, which is a different formula, you took an oath in God's name, the prohibition's not on the chayfetz, but rather the prohibition's on the? On the gavra, meaning the? Oh, it's a bet? A bet? On gavra? Yes, gavra. Uh, gavra. gavra. The, what's a gavra? Always. Hirsch is calling, hey, gavra, what are you doing? Gavr. 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 Michael. Arie. Yes, so, like in the book of Shoftim, we read about Jephthah. What was the, it? Yiftach HaGiladi. He did a Shavua. Shavua. Did he make a Shavua or a Neder? He made a Neder. And they can be opened up and freed. And he didn't do it? And that was a problem. Very nice. Now, let's get back to the Nazir. All of you, uh, I don't know who it was, it was uh, Yeshai or it was... Uh, David, you noticed that a nazir is the formation of a neder. He uses the language of neder. In other words, the prohibition will be on the object. What will be forbidden to him to eat and drink? Wine. Wine or all great products. In addition, two other prohibitions, and they are? Cut no cutting here. And number three? He cannot uh, defile himself to death. He can't, even for a mother and father, God forbid, brother or sister. These prohibitions. And then the Torah says, what's on his head? A crown, in, in Hebrew, a nezer. A nezer is on his head. And you said correctly, it's a spiritual nezer. 
My dear friends, we said a moment ago that there are people that say the Torah and the 613 mitzvot are not enough. I want to be like a more holy Jew. Let's take a Kohen Gadol. I want to be like a Kohen Gadol. I want to have on my head a spiritual crown, a nezer. I want more holiness. Is it permitted? Yes or no? Yes. A Kohen Gadol. Is he allowed to go to the cemetery to funerals? Can the Kohen Gadol take a, a little uh, yayin? No. So there's some similarities between to a Nazir. Nazir. Oh, so what can the Kohen doesn't the Kohen wear, though in his case it's physical. Kohen Gadol does wear one of the eight articles of clothing called a? What is it called? We learned it in Shemot. What is it called? Tzitz, right, very good. And inscribed is Kodesh Lashem. I want to be holy to God. What's his prerogative in taking the neder? What does it say? Pasuk 5, very good, David. He, whatever period of day, if he took a neder for 30 days, he took for 60 days, a year, 10 years, it says, Ad milotayamim, until he fills the days of what? Ashe yazir Lashem Kadoshia. Or it says later in 7, Kinezer Elokav, the crown of godliness is on his head. Kadoshu Lashem, you see the emphasis in three different places. This person is doing it for the sake of heaven. He's doing it for the sake of holiness. Is it allowed? Yes. He wants to be like a Kohen Gadol, even though he wasn't born, even though his father is not a Kohen. My dear friends, please open up verse 11. Pasuk Yud Aleph. Ve'asa Kohen. I'm sorry. On the eighth, uh, on when if his... Uh, days of uh, Nizirut were interrupted and he became defiled. He has to stop his counting. And then, what does he bring on the eighth day? He brings offerings. One will be what? One will be a chatat, a sin offering. The other, ola, a burnt offering. And if everything was even okay, in verse 13, vizot Torah hanazir. Do you see the word Torah? Torah hanazir? Meaning Torah from the word? Hora'ah, instruction, law. Vizot Torah Nazir. I'm continuing to read. Bio Milot, Yemein Nizro, when he fills up. Milot, Malay. Yemein Nizro, the days of his Nizirot. What shall he do? Yavioto. This guy's going to have to come. El Petach And then what must he do? Vikrivit Korban Olashem. He must bring his offering to God. Number one. Keves Ben Shinatot Tamim. He's going to bring a complete offering. A, without a, a, a mum, without a, a defect, a keves, one for Ola, and then it says, a female lamb, what does it say? For what? Is that what you have written in your chumash? I can't believe it. A chatat? A sin offering? I beg your pardon. What did he do? Wrong. Does anyone here understand the question we're trying to raise? Yeah. The Nazir that wants to become holy, add more Kiddusha to his life. He wants to be almost like a Kohen Gadol. He, he does it for the sake of God. He, he knows the formula, the words, and he accepts it. <coughs> when the period ends, he has to bring also a Chatat offering. Hmm. Our question is, Why? How did you know that was the question? Very good. Who has an answer here? He's Ishai? depriving himself from the world. He's cutting himself off from the community. Very nice. And therefore? Therefore, it's, it's not a great thing to do. That's not a great thing to do. What else are you adding, David? I have a question. One second. Let's first relate to... Well, it's, linking, it's linking to this. One second. Before we go to the question, I want to understand... And, and, and we started a good a good start, Yishai says. He deprived himself from something that's permitted. I want to complete that idea. What do you want to add? So I think according to the Rambam, it said like, because he don't enjoy the pleasure of the food. So you're you're saying in different words what Yishai is saying. Yes, but it's also other opinions. Some say you have to bring the sin of him because he's, he make an end of the, the Nazir about, about this nether. Maybe it's not a good thing to end it. 
I don't understand it that way. He let's say he completed. He took upon himself to be a nazir for sixty days. The minimum, by the way, usually is thirty days. He did it. I, I want to follow up what Yeshai says. The Talmud Yerushalmi teaches us, based on creation in Genesis, whatever God created in the world is for the benefit of man. Man is the pearl of creation. Man is the spitz, the pinnacle of the world. Everything in the world was for the benefit of man. There are things that the Torah says we cannot use, but maybe we can benefit financially. But the world was created so we can benefit from. So the fact that he is forbidding himself to enjoy wine or grape products, okay, that means he's really not benefiting from the world. God wants us, in a more deeper sense, to use the world, unlike Christian theology, and become holy. To enjoy things in the world in proper measure and become holy and add more holiness. We do not have to detach ourselves, get away from society. We don't have to live like a monk in a monastery. We don't have to go on top of the mountain Abba, and scream Abba or this or that to get close to God. We can get close to God inside this room, in the Beit Midrash, waiting patiently on a line and respecting people in front of you and not elbowing them this way or that way, right? All of our life, Torah permeates all dimensions of our life. God gave us the blueprints of how to connect to the Kedusha that's deeply ingrained inside ourselves. And we have 613 commandments. It's a lot of work. Comes a person and says, it's not enough. I want to do more. Or I want to prevent myself from this and that. So the Torah says, I give you the formula, but you should know. You're doing a chet. You're doing a sin. It's not the ideal way. We, as members of Am Yisrael, we're idealists. We don't settle for less. You see the guy sitting next to you? You see the guy sitting, you see the guy sitting next to you? Don't look, don't look. Don't look. Do you know what he said in Shimon Esrei today? He said the following. And then he said, He's always aspiring for completeness. He's not settling for less. Just like this guy, this wholesaler or retailer. He wants to make more and more money. Even more so, we should know that spiritually, we should never settle for less. We don't want to be a bunch of bidi Jews. Why don't we just, okay, after the fact I did the mitzvah. If we can do the commandment in the best way, in the most initial way, in the most complete sense, that is our ambition. That is our aspiration. And therefore, we're going to be warned, it's not ideal to take a neder and forbid yourself to become a nazir or other things. If you really have a spiritual problem overcoming some problems, you can make holiness in this object, say ice cream or whatever, or frankfurters or going to town is forbidden to me. All these things you can forbid yourself. Maybe you need this in the interim, in this period of time, you need the spiritual boost. Okay, the Torah allows for it, but you should know. There are other ways how to deal with it as well. What you brought is, a, Rashi brought in the name of the Talmud, in verse 11, you can all see it, Rabbi Elazar Kipper, one of the great Tanaic scholars, Shetzier Atzmo Menayayin. He grieved himself from the wine. The wine is one of the seven products, the species of the land of Israel, right? What, 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 where is that stated in, uh, what's the name of that bestseller? Ah, the Chumash, right. And where does it appear? Very good, Chumash Tevarim. What chapter did you say? Shmona, Shmona, there we go. You have, you have some really good, uh, these students, amazing rabbis that they have, they, they know it all by heart already. 8a, eight, eight, chapter 8, verse 8. Then we have the seven fruits of the land of Israel. Eretz Chita, Usa Ora, Vegefen. Gefen. The fruit of the vine, which we make wine. Okay? The Torah didn't say a, uh, that Eretz Israel is going to produce Coca Cola or something else. Torah, our land is producing grapes. By the way, grapes are right now ripening, right? They're still very expensive, probably in the market. Probably like 20 shekels or so, but Ken Arav. Betach. Wow. I see every, everything. 
We're learning about nizirut. It's just yayin. Ah, you see, the Rav knows that nether is not applicable to the Rav's cookies. <laughs> Thank you, Rav. Right, right. Okay. Uh, David Bradley, five minutes ago you wanted to uh, say something and I stifled you. I'm sorry. Yeah, so the question was, is there an equivalent for the Kohen Gadol maybe after Yom Kippur? In other words, even though he's doing this for Kuala Shul, he's doing everything. Nonetheless, he's also, he too, is abstaining from, the, from similar things. We've seen core, other corollaries between the Kohen Gadol and the Nazir. Is there a corollary, cor, corollary for a sacrifice afterwards or for something else like that? No, we only know of a Nazir, that he wants to make himself similar to a Kohen Gadol. Correct. That's to bring the sacrifice. Is there another subject in the Torah that someone compares himself to a Kohen Gadol? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying, is there, no, is there something else that the Kohen does after, like, so you, somebody becomes Kohen Gadol, any Kohen can be Kohen Gadol. Right, and he oversees yeah. everything happening in the Beit HaMikdash, yeah, and he's yeah. totally holy, he's in the Beit HaMikdash every day, he has his laws that are particular to him. In particular for Yom Kippur, he's isolating and, himself from his family. Yes, sir. Does he have to do anything afterwards? Is no. Anything... He has to function as a Kohen Gadol and be there for the Jewish people all the time. His There's prayers no, are very important. Of the Nazir because it's... No, not that I know of. Okay. okay. Um, gentlemen, any other questions here regarding uh, the Nazir? Hmm? Any other questions here? Huh? We're, we're just skimming, you know, skimming through it. Uh, is it clear to you? Uh, okay, what I want to say is this. I want to say the following. We're learning about our holy camp. We learn about various subjects. Various things that we've learned about bring the person closer to the Kodesh. And some subjects bring us further away. Think of right now a sketch, two columns. Things that are bringing, us, bringing the person closer as opposed to things causing to be more distant. A mitzorah. Was he brought closer or was he put, made distant? Distant. 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 Very good. A sota. Was she brought closer or she became distant? Distant. Closer. She was brought eventually to which place? Oh. The Beit HaMikdash, the, the Holy Temple. <laughs> the, holy, <laughs> the Holy Temple. To, to, so we're hoping that maybe the awe of the Holy Temple, the, the, the spirituality, the holiness of the Holy Temple will bring her to her senses to either admit or continue to say, no, it never happened. It, it, resol it resolves it either, either way, it gets resolved. The can, but but she's brought to there. A Nazir, is he brought closer to holiness or is he taken further away from holiness? Good. He's brought closer to holiness. Very good. <laughs> what about the person that stole by force and then swore falsely? falsely? Is he brought closer distant. or is he made distant? Well, what are we bringing him to? He's going to repent by what? By paying, adding a fifth, and then he's going to come to the Beit HaMikdash and bring his... El HaKippurim. Very good. So we see different matters, different subjects here. Certain, certain persons were brought closer. Certain ones were made distant. Okay? Let's now... Uh, we're skipping over some things. Time is short. The work is a lot, and our teacher is not so qualified. In verse 22, 23, the last section of our parsha, Birchat Kohanim. Do you see, gentlemen, the last section of Perek Vav? Vaidabera Dunai El Moshe Lemor. Dabera Laron. Vel Banav Lemor. I want to stop right now and tell me, can you count how many Kohanim are there? And they are? Not Eliezer, but? Not Eliezer, but? Very good. Elazar and? Itamar. Uh, what about the grandson of Aaron? Is he alive? He's certainly alive. Is he a Kohen? No. 
not yet. When we get later to Parshat Pinchas, we'll learn why he then becomes inducted to become a Kohen. So right now we have three Kohenim, and the mitzvah is Ko, like this, Tivarchu at B'nai Yisrael. This is what you're going to be blessing B'nai Yisrael. First of all, the Kohenim have the privilege, yet they have the obligation. And they have to do it in a particular way. Amor lahem. You're going to what? Say to them in a command. Amor lahem. It has to be verbally. It can't be spiritually, but it must be verbally. And now we come to the three faceted bracha. The bracha that has three different sides to it. Number one, Yivarechacha Adonai Vishmarecha. What dimension of life is this referring to? Material. Material. Very good. Yivarechacha, bracha. The three root letters of the word, Mr. Yossi, you're going to have to tell us the answer now. Yivarechacha, the three root letters of Yivarechacha. What, what do you say? Yivarechacha, the first opening word of the coining, the priestly blessing. What are the three root letters of the word Yivarechacha? Go to the root. We want to understand things to go to the root. The first letter should be what, gentlemen? No. Yud is the what we are conjugating in the future. Bet. Bet. Next letter? Resh. Third letter? Chaf. Bet. Resh. Chaf. Hirsch will now tell you. Numerically, Bet is? Resh is? And Chaf is? What is the common denominator here? Double. In the, tens, in the units digit? In the tens digit, right? And the, what is it called? The one hundreds digit? Is that what they, yes. they call it? Yes or no? Yes. So the morale of Prague explains the root of the word bracha. That it's plenty, double, abundance. We call in Hebrew shefa. The word to influence, lehashpia. Shefa, abundance, a lot. So the Maral explains, materialistically, like Renan says, Bet, Resh, Chaf are all more than one. Two, twenty, and two hundred. So there's one level that the coin will give us a bracha. It's, is it from him or from God? It's from Hashem. But God wants to it to be deployed, to be brought into the world through God's special unit called the Kohanim. So, Yivarechacha Hashem. May God bless you, give you this Shefa. But it's not enough just to be a recipient of the Shefa. You want to hold on to it. You want to be able to use it. And therefore, the next word, V'yishmarecha, Shmira, to guard it, that it shall not be depleted, that a... How do you say robbers in the Aramaic and the Gemara? Lis, listim, not listmen. Listim. Don't make a mistake, David Adler, please. Listim. Robbers will come and take it away from. We don't want that to happen. You know, there could be legal robbers like in the bank system or other robbers in any way or fashion. Okay? We don't want the listim to be coming as Rashi brings in the name of the Talmud. So, the part one of the bracha, like Renan says correctly, material blessing to receive and it to be guarded. Uh, blessing number two and blessing number three, God willing, in our next shiur, same time, same place. See you. Have a nice day, gentlemen. Shalom and kol